<sighs> hey everybody, it's me. Welcome back to the shop. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm standing here by my bandsaw, right here, right here, and we're going to do the cut on make that little box. I promised you when I did this box that you could watch me do the cutouts so you can see how to come out with the three little cubby holes and the little tray on the top. I uh, talked about this design in previous um, videos of this bandsaw series episodes. Anyway, to duplicate this, I, I decided I would do another box. So what I did basically is I took another block. It's actually, this one is actually about an inch longer. So the dimensions are different than that one. But all the cuts and the, and the layout is all the same and proportionally. So I've already cut the sides off, the front and the back, so that you didn't have no reason for you to watch that because the real critical cuts are going to come inside of here. And this is the layout. This is this block right here from this cut to over here. This block here is going to be that upper tray. And then these are the three little cutout cubbies down below. Two dividers. Then we have a little crisp edge there. And over here for that tray to sit on. So it's always sitting on at least two places and as many as three when it's in its natural position at this end or this end. It'll sell, still sit on top of this one here. When you slide over here, this tray will sit on top of this one. So anyway, um, if you have any questions about how this is laid out, just let me know. But we are doing what I call a crisp corner. Instead of, instead of cutting these little cubby holes out in a single U, where you come down, you curve nonstop and go all the way through, curve here, and come back out. To do that, you, you have to use the smallest blade you can on your bandsaw. I would use a 3 16 if I was going to make that kind of cut. And the reason you do that is that then you end up with this chunk of wood here. And depending on the size of this, you can actually take that and make a mini uh, box out of it. Which I've done that with a bunch of these things when I cut out the drawers and that. On this one, they're going to be so small I'm not going to worry about it. But more importantly, I wanted a crisp corner in here because these areas are so small that cutting that down to a crisp corner will give you just that much more area inside the cubby. So, that's why we're going to do it this way on these. Uh, on the upper tray, you have to do it that way or the tray would just be such small holes here, a little tray area as if you did it with the curve, that it would not hardly be worth having something to put something in it. So, anyway, so I thought I'd do these cuts for you. Now, if you remember, we got to pull the tray out first. So, I'm going to make this cut here, go along this one outside edge of this divider all the way down and stay short of your line at the bottom because you're going to be doing some sanding so I would stay a sixteenth of an inch above this line use it as a guideline but stay away from it leave the line and we're going to do this first cut all the way down here stop come back out come over here and cut this side and that is so that the length of this thing is going to be the right length to be able to fit in this area so then we cut this one down to the ledge and stop and back out. Now we want to make this tray just slightly smaller than this height. So as you can see, there's a double line. We're going to cut along this upper line and then this piece will come away. When we come back in here, we'll just come in here, curve until we get to a horizontal area where we can move it through here and then follow that straight line all the way over to this corner. That'll create this corner for us and it will create these two here that all we'll have to do is come back and trim them or sand them down to get equal because you want all four of these points to be equal and we'll do that probably with the sanding quite frankly um, so we're going to do all these cuts and I'm only going to do this in one try so if I fail and you see this the failure wasn't to a point where you still aren't going to see enough of it to be comfortable with watching this because I don't want to make another one. This will be the last one we make of this style for now. Uh, even though I like the style, you can make these all day long real easy and very little work to, to get them to make little boxes. And you can glue them together to make bigger boxes with a lot of sections in them, things like that. So you have a lot of potential from this. 
It's a nice little design, and it's all designed off of the 4x4 posts that you can buy at any big box store, which is what makes it nice. That's great material for making lots of bandsaw boxes, uh, especially if you're starting off because it's pretty cheap. That's what's still one of the least expensive woods out there that you can buy in a size that you can use. And it's nice not to have to do a whole lot of gluing up when you glue up a bunch of three-quarter inch pieces together. That's always a lot bigger chore. So, to make this box, we're going to make these cuts. And you're going to see me do it in real time in this video. So, let's do this so that we know, hopefully, that this thing will go as smoothly as I just said it would. So, let's turn you toward the camera. Like so. I think you can see right there. And Let's turn this light on. I think that's good enough. Yeah, I think you can see there's the point of cutting. So you can see the line. You're, hopefully this will work for you. It's kind of going to be tight for me with you right there looking over my left shoulder. But I think we can do this. So let's go ahead and let's cut this box out. And then we'll talk about it at the end. And we'll end this because this is going to take long enough to do this as it is. Ready? So here we go. First cut. I'm going to tell you right now, you should turn it off to back it out because otherwise you'll have to pull that blade off and you have to put it back on. So I will be shutting this off from now on, letting it stop, and that's going to add to the total time, but you know how we can do it because you do want to turn it off before you back out without, so you don't pull your blade off. So now we're going to do the second cut, then we'll come in here and do that third cut to make this take this block out for the tray. Okay, now let's do the third cut. From here out, most of my cuts that I have to back out of will be small cuts, short. So I can probably just back out, but we'll see as we go along because it depends on how good the blade feels, how straight you did the line, so you're going to have to judge it. I'm going to try not to pull that blade off, but back out without turning it off if I can. So let's continue cutting this out. We're now going to do the third cut, which will cut this block away which will become the little tray. So let's do that now. So we have to come in over here, curve in, and so that we can go straight across. I'm gonna go ahead, and I think since I'm here, Now, as I pull that out, I feel no resistance. If I started to feel resistance, I would stop and do it differently. Now we're going to come in and curve over to here. that block out of the way now let's cut this out but you know what let me do this real quick There we go. So now we have that corner cut out. Let's cut the box top, the tray out.
see where we're at. You can see I've cut here, so we're gonna come down a little further. This way. Well, it looks like we still gotta come down. Let's break the rule. I'm gonna watch what I'm doing. There we go. Now I'll cut my tray loose. Now it's all that's left is to cut these three out right here. So let's do those real quick. We're gonna come in. This cut's already done. So we'll come in here, get along the line, and cut up. Then we'll come down and cut. First, I tell you what, first let's cut all of these lines straight down. So let's go ahead and do all of those. Remember, stay off your line. Make sure you're not dragging hard. I go a little deeper here. Now on this side. Very gently. Do the next one. One more time. Now watch out for this one. We got a knot here, so pay attention and listen to what you're doing as you go through that knot. Okay, now let's come in and get most of this out. So we want to bring this one down a little more. Now we got another piece out of the way. Let's cut the rest of this cubby out. Let's bring this down. There we are. Sometimes because it's different here than here, I can put it in and lean it back or lean it forward just a tiny bit as long as I keep contact on that table because you don't want it to jerk out of your hand. You can come in here to cut that at this side without going deeper down here then. Sometimes that's all you need, that little bit of extra touch. So now we got this one cut out. Let's cut this one out. we go. Now I got that cut away. Now let's limb this out on the corner.
There's two. I should tell you, I'm pushing with this hand back here. I'm guiding with this hand, and I'm not putting any pressure on that divider, because that's very gentle. You could break that very easily. And there we go. Cut that piece loose. One little piece left. That'll leave a mark. Okay. And there's our pieces. So now you have your frame. And if you mark your top back and front, properly and there's the front and there's the back and that'll all go together something like this I think this one's upside down and it should fit back together kind of nicely like so now with a little bit of sanding we'll be able to get another box just like this one. This piece, now in this piece, this was the top. I am gonna flip it over and I'm gonna cut it out this way, a double piece here. And then, but I'll use this as the top of the tray and this as the bottom. So by flipping it over, I get a nice smooth bottom of the tray because when you cut it out with the bandsaw like I did here when I cut this piece loose this isn't necessarily perfectly flat and trying to flat that rather than do that I'll just use the bottom so then that is then going to become the little tray like that and of course this one's a little bigger so but you can see this one fits very nicely on there and in the corner here and if I move it over to here that's hard to see, isn't it? If I put it over here, the tray is going to fit in that corner nicely. And if I put it over here, fit into the corner, it still comes up on this divider. So this will work fine. Once I put the things on, after a lot of sanding, I'll cut this out. You don't need to watch that. But that's all there is to it. This is now cut out nice and neat. Now what you have to do is I take a flat board and I put a little handle on mine so I can keep it like a nice and flat and now you can go through here and get all the way to these corners and crisp things up be very careful not to break these off and then if you have to fill it a little bit with a little bit of sawdust and glue to clean up the little band mark band saw marks that were went in a little too far maybe or the chisel to clean it up it's not hard it takes a little time but get it pretty reasonably smooth so that then we'll be able to do the donger painting on it so Anyway, I think that's it. We actually had a pretty successful time. I was surprised. That one went a little better than the last one did. As you can see, it got a little fudgy a couple times, but keep it cool. If you have to turn it over and look at the bottom side to see, because sometimes when that line is cutting this from, when it's cutting up here at the blade, it isn't always touching exactly 90 degrees at the bottom. It, no matter how well you set that up, you may get that. If you get that a lot, then you probably have something going on with your blade. But front to back, it should be pretty straight anyway when you have it set down. But keep in mind, you're cutting your guide surface that's down flat is actually being cut by the bandsaw. So that's going to that's gonna be a little bit non-flat. So that may throw you off on making your cuts. So just watch that you don't go too far. If you do, then just plan on filling that a little bit with sawdust. It's no big deal. You'll get used to doing it, and you'll learn not to do that. Don't be in such a hurry like I was today. 
uh, when you do it, and you'll have no problem. Listen for your blade. Do not push it too hard, or you'll get that blade hot, and then it'll dull the blade a lot quicker. So, uh, so far, it did a pretty good easy cut. Didn't take any real pushing. I let the blade do all of the work. And all I did really was just guide it with a very gentle touch of pushing it. And the blade, if it was going a little slower, I pushed a little. Then it just went a little slower because I kept the same amount of pressure to hold it just barely against the blade so the blade can dig in and let it slide forward. So very gentle touch when you do this. And it's easy. Uh, I used a quarter inch blade because it's a little more durable than the 316s and you get a much better control of your line staying nice and straight when you're cutting with that as opposed to the 316s you can get a little more wavy it's a little harder to hold it straight on a line and since I was cutting these out to a nice crisp corner instead of doing this in one cut so I would have to curve then I would go into the 316 so that my curve would be a lot less because curving with this quarter inch blade you're going to have a 5 8 radius on your curve and if you go with the uh, one eighth inch. What? Well, excuse me. With the three sixteenths inch blade, then that instead of five eighths, that's about five sixteenths of an inch curve. Much smaller curve. So uh, I tried to use the quarter inch for most band saws, unless you have to cut it out in one piece and you need that curve. Take a look if a five eighths radius is too much for that curve you're trying to do. Then you're going to have to cut down. I will tell you, sanding this out is a lot easier by having the crisp corners. Because you can sand with a flat piece. When you go to a curve, getting in those curves and getting that sanded down nice and smooth is a lot harder. So I actually like doing it this way. But of course, you do lose your pieces that you cut out of here because you cut chunks out of them. Because it takes at least two cuts to get your piece out. So instead of ending up with nice little one pieces, one, one set of pieces in here that you might take that block and make something else. Uh... You won't be, have that privilege. So just depends on whether you want to just throw that wood away or use it for something else later on as to whether or not it's worth doing it. So that's about it. I hope you didn't I hope this helps. If you have any questions, any thoughts, any comments, just leave them down below. Hopefully I explained everything to you. Uh and I think that's about it for this video. Congratulations, we made it through. All in one take. So if you have any questions, like I said. I do read them all, and I appreciate it when you guys leave comments. Um, if you learned something here, you like this video, hit that like button. It lets me know that I'm doing something right. Most importantly, though, please come back again because I'm nowhere near done. Thanks, and we'll see you guys again very soon.